Hello, everyone. Welcome to the longer version of the talk uh, for our paper published in TCHES, Cyber Channel Protections for Picnic Signatures. This is a joint work with Diego Arania from Aarhus University, Sebastian Berund, Thomas Eisenbars, and Luca Wilk from the University of Lübeck, and Greg Zaberucha from Microsoft Research. I am Akira Takahashi from Aarhus University, and I will be talking about the overview of our main result. In the second part, Okan Sekel from the University of Lübeck will give more details about our implementation, as well as the concrete side channel leakage analysis. So this research is motivated by the fact that the side channel resistance of cryptographic schemes is becoming more and more relevant as they are becoming, as they are deployed in real life condition. It is also one of the important evaluation criteria of the NIST post-quantum crypto standardization process. However, unlike other candidates, uh, there has been little study on side channel uh, resilience of the picnic signature schemes, or more generally, signatures based on MPC in the head, zero knowledge proof. So we want to push forward this line of research. Let's briefly recap the current uh, state of the art. Picnic is a Fiat Shamir type signature uh, derived from MPC in the head, zero knowledge proof of Ishai et al. It has a cap of nice features. For example, its security doesn't rely on any number of theoretic assumptions. Essentially, the only uh, assumptions we need are security of block cipher and hash function model as a random oracle. It also supports uh, various parameters and the different signing methods. However, the first version of picnic implementation was shown to be vulnerable to differential power analysis. Although a masking countermeasure was proposed last year, it, it left several practical challenges. For example, uh, it had to change the format of output signature, which breaks interoperability with an existing verification algorithm. Moreover, it increases the signature size uh, depending on the masking order. These features seem undesirable in practice, and in fact, other masked uh, post-quantum signatures like Dilijam or Qtesla didn't have such issues. On the other hand, there's also an updated version of a picnic called Picnic 3, which follows the MPC in the head uh, paradigm extended with the so-called pre-processing phase and leads to more uh, compact signature. Unfortunately, Picnic 3 has never been uh, evaluated from a side channel perspective. So in this research, we address essentially two questions. First, could a side channel attacker exploit MPC in the head with preprocessing to attack Picnic 3? Second, can we maintain interoperability and signature size while applying masking countermeasures? We answer these questions with the following results. First, we identify two types of side channel vulnerability of Picnic 3. While the first one is a direct adaptation of the previous attack on Picnic 1, the second attack is new and exploits specific properties of MPs in the head with pre-processing paradigm. As a countermeasure, we suggest a generic approach to mask zero knowledge proof using MPs in the head with pre-processing. In the paper, we proved that our masked signing operations satisfy the standard masking security notion called the T-probing security. And we further support uh, our claim using the formal verification tool called mask verif. To achieve provable security, we have to sacrifice performance due to masking overhead. But we also uh, suggest some uh, heuristic ways to improve performance by partially training, trading formal T-probing security Still, uh, security of this heuristic can be validated uh, with experimental uh, leakage analysis. We then apply our generic masking countermeasures to Picnic 3 so that uh, we can achieve first order uh, masking implementation, masked implementation. As a side contribution, we also publicly release a masked SHA-3 implementation used as a building block. We finally conclude with a practical electromagnetic uh, side channel leakage analysis. Uh, Okan will give more insights on the latter two points. So I'm gonna show how side channel uh, attackers can steal the secret signing key of Picnic 3. Let's take a look at uh, how zero knowledge proof using the MPC in the head works. So here the prover uh, holds a secret uh, shared key and the verifier has some circuit description F as well as its 
output x when f is evaluated and on the secret key. Using the secret shared key, the prover executes some multi-party computation protocols in her head using uh, some imaginary parties. And each party outputs some view consisting of secret uh, key share, randomness, and all the incoming uh, messages in the protocol. She commits uh, to every view and on receiving uh, some challenge index, she reviews a subset of views. Then the verifier essentially uh, checks that MPC was executed correctly. So that's an overview of MPC in the head paradigm. The first attack is relatively simple. Of course, um, the unopened party's view is very sensitive because it contains uh, the remaining share of secret key. So if a uh, side channel adversely obtains some leakage information of that share, uh, they can immediately recover uh, the secret key. This type of attack uh, was already discovered against Picnic 1, and we can show that essentially uh, the same attack also applies to Picnic 3 in a direct manner. So what about MPC in the head with uh, preprocessing? In this extended paradigm, the MPC uh, protocol is divided into uh, two phases. The first part is offline, meaning that it can be executed independently of any input values and parties use the random seed to pre-process some state information. Then in the off online phase, uh, parties can efficiently perform uh, the actual computation by making use of the uh, pre-processed uh, states. Once MPC protocol is done, the prover commits to uh, both online and offline phases. Now the challenge has two dimensions. The first part, uh, B, indicates whether offline or online phase is to be reviewed. In the former case, a prover simply opens all the random Cs used for the offline computation, which contain no sensitive information. If the on off online phase uh, is to be reviewed, uh, then the prover essentially opens uh, all but one views as usual. And verify your checks that either uh, offline or online phase is executed correctly. So before describing an attack, uh, let's see why and how preprocessing is used. In the MPC setting, uh, multiplication of two share two uh, secret uh, shared inputs is often costly. So we want to save online uh, computational costs uh, by pushing some work to the offline phase. Here's a standard trick. In the offline phase, uh, parties generate a lot of random sharings, which are so-called uh, beaver uh, triples. They do not depend on uh, inputs uh, to the circuit. And in particular, they can be easily uh, generated in the MPC in the head setting. Since the prover can essentially uh, manipulate uh, all parties, however they like. In the online phase, you can safely reconstruct the shares after adding uh, preprocessed uh, randomness, lambda, to secret inputs uh, AX and Y. Then by rewriting the multiplication equation using the random triple, uh, you can easily compute the result uh, without any nonlinear operations. However, you can notice that this offline online paradigm is actually another attack surface and that can be exploited uh, by side channel adversaries. So in this attack, we assume that the offline phase is reviewed. In that case, all pre-processing information uh, from the offline phase is made public. So if the attacker has uh, probed the right information from the, uh, the online phase, they have enough information to compute the secret as uh, security of the MPC protocol only holds when one of the preprocessing uh, shares is private. Importantly, uh, this attack works independently of the number of parties in MPC. So you cannot mitigate it by simply tweaking uh, the number of unopened parties, which you might do using the previous countermeasure. So we are motivated uh, to design a different approach. So on a high level, uh, in our masking countermeasure, the prover essentially shares uh, the shares. Concretely, each party's uh, share is split again into some shares and every party 
uh, internally uh, does the computation in a masked way. Accordingly, uh, all the views are ma maintained in a, a secret shared form until the prover learns a challenge. And once she obtained the challenge, either she can uh, keep them in a secret shared form when uh, the offline phase is reviewed, or she only needs to reconstruct views of opened uh, parties when offline uh, online phase is reviewed. So in this way, even if the adversary gets information of some share, there's always uh, at least one share of the view that remains uh, completely hidden. So with this approach, we don't have to change the number of parties. So uh, it neither breaks interoperability with existing verification algorithms, nor uh, introduces uh, any overhead in signature size due to masking. While uh, we can prove that it uh, actually meets the standard uh, masking security notion. However, uh, one caveat is that uh, we also have to mask uh, seed expansion and the commitment uh, computations because the prover doesn't know uh, which of the uh, offline or online phase can be made public before uh, receiving the challenge. In particular, Picnic 3 employs the SHA-3 hash function to commit to uh, states and all the online uh, messages. As we will see in benchmark, uh, masking all these hash invocations is expensive, and we would like to avoid that in practice. So accordingly, uh, we also provide some heuristic options to partially unmask some non-sensitive hash computations. The rationale behind this choice is as follows. First, uh, since the signing operation is randomized, some hash inputs that are unique uh, per signature are not sensitive uh, by regarding SHA-3 as a random local and assuming that the attacker only gets to see uh, T input bits of SHA-3. Second, uh, committed commitment outputs are part of the signature, so they are definitely uh, not sensitive. Under such a heuristic assumption, we can actually selectively mask half of the SHA-3 uh, computations. Although we lose a uh, formal t probing uh, security guarantee, we were able to experimentally uh, confirm that no leakage occurs from this heuristic version of implementation. So uh, that's it uh, from me. Uh, now I'm passing the baron to Okan, who is going to talk about uh, further practical aspects of our results, including uh, benchmarks and leakage analysis of uh, Picnic 3 implementations. Thank you, Akira. And I would like to welcome everyone again. Uh, let me start with the performance results of our implementation. In this table, you can see the benchmark results of the uh, you can see the benchmark results, and the interesting column is the is is, is the actually the overhead. So the highlighted row corresponds to the un unprotected unprotect picnic implementation, and as you can see, hashing covers the seventy percent of of the of, of the operations. So by adapting the masking technique of the SHA tree, we managed to reduce the overhead uh, overhead uh, one point eight from five point four. Here you can use fully provable secure masking and mask every hashing, or as I could described, you can selectively choose hash function and mask only the sensitive ones. So I would like to continue with our practical setup. So in this picture, you can see an, an overview of our, of our setup. As our capturing device, we use the Tektronix MSO6 with two different sampling rates. And, for, uh, and, and, and as, as our target device, we have used STM32 discovery board, which is suggested by the PQM4 project. And with a with an um, uh, with an uh, with, a, with an ARM Cortex M4 clocked at 128 megahertz. As our test environment, uh, the, the leakage analysis code is working with the PQM4 GitHub repo. Thus, the analysis uh, can be reproduced reproduced easily. And as our search knowledge source, we have chosen a blogging capacitor as seen in the picture and placed our electromagnetic electromagnetic probe close to this point because uh, that point is actually represent the power uh, consumption the best. In our analysis tool, we have used TVLA, and this is a very uh, simple statistical tool used in the, in the literature for leakage analysis. It's a pass-fail uh, test to determine if an implementation has a leakage or not. What we call leakage, in this case, of course, the data-dependent behavior of the device. Of course, the analysis should be implemented carefully. Even, uh, even uh, small changes within the implementation, such as usage of registers, 
uh, response type of your, of your random number generator or a desynchronization between a target and the control PC detected by the by the test. Even if those are actually not, not exactly uh, exactly uh, uh, exploitable leakage or, or real leakage, those leakages can be can be seen. So, um, so there are two different versions of this. The first one is fixed versus random, and this one is to detect all first order leakages of a device. And the idea is to process either a fixed or random data, and therefore this will give you a data dependency through the implementation by comparing the traces belonging to a fixed data and with the traces belonging to a random data. And the second one is random versus random. In this case, we always process a random data. However, the classification depends on a single bit inside inside the implementation. Therefore, the second um, the, uh, there, therefore uh, the second method is used to observe specific targets in an implementation. And our goal in this leakage analysis is to first show that describe attacks in the earlier parts of uh, of our presentation are indeed possible, and of course show that our mask picnic three implementation is leakage free. So. The first, uh, first attack is the same as by, by Gellers et al. In this attack, we use the values from the pre-computation phase, and the highlighted values corresponds to, correspond, corresponds to the attack and the opened, uh, on, on the open phase, or probe, uh, probe on an unopened party. And we see around 1,000 traces, the leakage becomes absurd, as you can see from the, from the, from the graph in the right-hand side. So in our second analysis, we implement the random version random test to see to see and uh, actually verify the leakage inside the unprotected picnic tree implementation. So as, as you see in the previous uh, previous uh, part of our presentation, uh, the first attack is novel and cannot be eliminated by uh, approaches such as SNI in the head. Here you can see the highlighted, highlighted values are opened and we are measuring a single online simulation. And using the highlighted values, we managed to see the leakage and verify this attack. So the attack on the unopened uh, online phase. Moreover, we can see that uh, with less than uh, uh, th uh, 3,000 traces, the leakage becomes clear. So next, we proceed with the leakage analysis of SHA-3. So we use fixed versus random setting and hash a random value or a fixed value. So why did we uh, focus on hashing? Because as we see in the is in, in, in the in the benchmarking uh, slide, the the 70 percent of picnic implementation is hashing, and therefore we have to protect. The SHA-3 part of our implementation. Uh, first of all, as sanity check, we disable the masking by forcing the mask value to zero. Here you can see the leakages everywhere of the implementation and becomes a sky record even uh, 2000 traces. And when we enable the masking again, we see that the leakages are gone even with the 1000 traces and there is no leakage. And finally, we implement the leakage analysis of the whole Picnic 3 implementation. Uh, we measure uh, me measured from beginning, uh, f uh, be beginning from the uh, from the signature and beginning from the signature until the end of the first MPC instance, and of course including an online and uh, an uh, offline phase. So, so we worked uh, with fixed versus random keys and use fixed or random key and fixed message. Uh, so we work with fixed fixed versus random setup, use a fixed or random key, fixed message and randomized signature for each case. So thus, the only thing uh, changes between those two cases is actually the secret key itself. Um, and and we have observed that the, the test results uh, are actually below the threshold value for, for all uh, 8 million sample points. Moreover, we have observed that the maximum t-test value has a stable pattern, as you can see in, in the right hand side, and remark that uh, if, you, if you remember uh, from the previous attacks or, or Ketchak analysis, uh, a real leakage has a clear increasing pattern even with a small number of traces. And here we can see a stable pattern even, uh, even after uh, 1 million traces. So, as a result, what we have shown in this work is uh, such an analysis on uh, KKW protocol is a real threat, and open values can act as, or actually act as uh, uh, open uh, uh, free props for adversary. And we have provided a mask MPC in that paradigm that can be worked with pre processing. And we implement our idea to Picnic 3 and see that with an overhead of 1.8 1 to uh, 5.4, we can achieve first order protection. We, also, uh, we have also provided uh, a, a, ma a mask SHA-3 implementation that is optimized for M4 for different options. So thank you for your attention. 
if you have any questions uh, or comments we gladly answer them answer them and you can find more details in, in our in our uh, in, in our imprint or um, if you would like to if you would like to take a look at our implementation you can you can check our check our github page um, as we told as we said before this is uh, fully fully uh, fully uh, connected with with uh, git uh, pkm4 project so that you can actually uh, reproduce benchmarking or reproduced analysis codes um, quite easily. Thank you.